Y'all gonna make me up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me act a fool up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me lose my cool up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me up in here. Y'all gonna make me lose my cool. Let me hear some job. I'm a movie mama. I never let her go. Y'all gonna make me up in here. Y'all gonna make me go. Up in here. 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 Y'all gonna make me lose my what? Y'all gonna make me lose my cool. Y'all gonna make me up in here. Y'all gonna make me lose my cool. Corrupt. We yeah. lost a good one. You know, I got chill from CMW. I see those two handsome brothers. Yes, uh, I got Weasel from Dirty OGs. You know, this is this is crazy, Paula, because um, it's touching home so deep. Um, I was lucky enough to, I had problems with DMX and I was lucky enough to be able to squash those problems and we got over our differences and became real cool. Baby, let me know what, what, what was your problem with DMX? What, what went down? Well, you know, um, I felt disrespected in a certain way and I responded on it. And I made a record called Calling Out Names. Talk about it. What, what happened? Specifics. How well, did you feel yeah. disrespected? <laughs> I mean, well, let's be real. Let's talk about it. I mean, we, you know, basically, we didn't see eye to eye about something. What? Everything ain't for everybody. But we just didn't see eye to eye about something. And, uh, you know, we bumped heads about it and basically went to war. Mm, you you went know, to war. Whoa. Heavy, heavy war, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and then, you know, through the times, because time is the healer of everything. Yes, all of them. And I met it, I saw him in the airport. My brother Hump came to me and was like, man, DMX right over there. I just saw him and was like, my brother corrupt. And we squashed our things in the airport. Isn't that crazy? And uh, we've been good friends ever since. 
So, you know, I got chill and I got weasel and yourself and I just wanted to have a moment of silence. Well, would you guys well, like to talk about it as well? Chill and weasel? Were you guys tight with DMX? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a, first of all, pleasure. Because that was a beautiful story. First of all, pleasure. You know what I mean? Uh, I've met you before. You guys are twins? Uh, uh, it, it's something like that. It's, <laughs> it's the Indian in us. We read. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. I forgot to put my teeth on again. Uh -oh. Put your I teeth can't. on. Wait, hold on. Well, teeth. you know, I got teeth pulled, and then you have to wait like three months before they can do the implants. Right. So, you know, I have to put them on. But let's keep talking. Oh, deep <laughs> that. I'm That's about football. I keep forgetting because the role I'm in right now, she's, you know, straight up a real Louisiana chick. Right. So, you know, some folk miss their teeth, especially when they're getting popped in the mouth. Well, so, you look good. You look good to us. We can't oh, tell. I love you guys. I love you, you guys look so easy, much. Young lady, you still good have job. that million dollar smile. That smile. Well, okay. While I'm doing this, can you guys talk about your stories with DMX? Let's 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 give a nice. I got a, you know, I got a couple cool stories with. I'd that. love to hear it. Let me hear. Uh, actually three of them i'll wrap it up real quick the first time i met dmx was with the homie jo felony on the what you can do uh uh video set with him and method man that was the first time i met him uh and he was you know real cool what you shit. gonna do we, we, yeah he was uh all by himself i'm the one that went over there and like broke the ice with him and introduced him and embraced him on the west went in there you know in his trailer with some of that california kush that oh, i yeah. usually have and then, uh, like my homie, my bro said, they went through their things. Of course, I was down with him. Man, fuck all them niggas. Right. And then they reconciled. <laughs> and we did a show with DMX a couple of years ago mm -hmm. at Dakota, at the Nokia in LA. Right. And we had a good night that night, you know, and we macked and hung out. So that was real cool, you know what I mean? Yes. And I was good and glad to see my him and my bro reconcile their differences and shit be like, man. So yeah, that was a couple of DMX stories. Yeah. The other one was, my wife said I kind of resembled the nigga, and that's why she that's married right. me 18 years ago. <laughs> she just bitch. Ain't this but stuff. that's what I told her, nigga. I said, now you can't take a picture with her. But I reminded him when that. I said, nigga, my wife said we kind of resemble, but you can't take a picture with her. But we laughed and shit that night at the no kill. But yeah, that was my three DMX stories. <laughs> okay, I got to protect the home. As for me, I, I met him. You know, it's a little famous little hangout in L.A. called J Jerry's well, Deli. Tell them who you are. Oh, I know Jerry. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. We right. have, like, there's one in Beverly Hills and one in Marina Del Rey. Exactly. So, first of all, you know what I'm saying? My name is Chill. I come from a group called Compass Most Wanted. Back in the day. Oh, oh we got some yeah. freaking heroes. My honey. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So, look, we hang. you know about the Jerry's Deli. We hanging out. Right. Okay. I'm up there with one of my homegirls. We in the booth eating some chicken wings, having some drinks or whatever. And DMX is over at the bar by himself. Ooh. You know, in LA, you know, dudes is getting pressed. You know what I'm saying? So you had some little LA dudes, you know, flexing on him, you know what I mean, in his face talking. But X was like stone-faced it, calm, just sitting there, you know what I mean? So I told the homegirl, I'm like, come on, let's go, you know what I'm saying, defuse this situation. You know what I mean? I didn't know him. But I'm a fan of him, you know what I mean? Oh, and I, I wasn't no, digging the, yes, the yes. president because he was on this side, you know what I mean? And I'm like, man, y'all stall him out, man. Leave him alone, you know what I'm saying? You the dude alone, man. He just out here chilling. You know what I mean? He was like, oh, don't worry about it, son. He's down just <laughs> like him. Him. <laughs> Let him keep coming, son. I got him. You know what I mean? We, you know what I mean? And you know, we chopped it up outside. He was like, yo, man. You know, he throw up his, you know, the these fingers right here. That's you know what I mean? From Rough Rider. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's it's rough Rider? Yeah, so he hit me yeah, up with that. So rough Rider was like a motorcycle gang, right? So to say, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, no, I ain't gonna say so to say, yeah. It was a, a, a company, they was a, a, a crew, yeah, a yeah, bunch of homies. Everything you could. Now they got chapters. Right. It's Rough Riders everywhere. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Everywhere. So, you know, um, that's my story. I just want to say, you know, I have a story. And shout out to his family. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Shout family, out to his you know what I'm family. saying? I'm a super duper fan. I'm going to continue. Always. To he's he's like, I mean, a hero. I, um, 
was with a girlfriend waiting in the lobby of uh, what hotel? It's one of those fancy ones in um, LA. And I was waiting with a girlfriend to get the FBI clearance to meet Stevie Wonder. Ah, right there. So I was waiting in the lobby. Why I had to have FBI clearance to meet Stevie Wonder was beyond me. It's not like I'm some criminal, but I had to have FBI clearance to meet Stevie Wonder. So while I was sitting in the lobby of this hotel, I want to say, I don't know which one it was, but um, one of the fancy ones in Los Angeles, he came in. And he was like, why are you sitting in this hotel room, you know, this hotel lobby by yourself? Right. And I'm waiting for clearance. And he was like, come on up to my room. He introduced me to Eve. Huh. And I mean, me and Eve, we, we got cool because of that. Um, the next day he invited me to go with him and Eve to um, Soul Train. Huh. And you know, we were cool. It was nothing like that. Like I knew he was married and it wasn't like a relationship type thing. And that night, you know, I was kicking it with him and it got late. He got me my whole, my own hotel room oh. and he read me a story to sleep. Wow. Literally read a story to me <laughs> to sleep. Like he didn't try to do it to me. He didn't try to, try to do it to you. Wait, right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Love for him. He didn't try to do it to you. Did you? He did not try to do it to me. Did you try to do it to him? He's better than I am. Nineteen hold on, hold on, hold on. Didn't try to do it to him. Did you try to do it to him? Deal was married men, and oh. I made that quite clear off oh. top. Like, if a nigga lie, that's one thing, but I don't. Uh, okay, okay, cut. Men. Yeah, uh huh. If he and lied. He literally that. read me a story to sleep. And when that's I woke cool. up, that's some shit I would do. And yeah. I left, you know. But to me, that was more than a gentleman. That was like love. Like, boo, why are you in this hotel lobby waiting for FBI to introduce you to somebody that, that you know love, got love for you? Right. So, you know. To me, he looked out and it was bigger than just looking out because he introduced me to Eve. And Eve is, as we all know, a diva in her own right. And right. and friends because of that. And he was more right. about me, you know, helping Eve with her acting career. Cause you know, right after that, she ended up doing the TV show, the Eve, you know, the show that she did when she was Eve. What is that? Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. And you know, we, we, we bonded, Eve and I, we talked about acting and it wasn't about the sex. Like, and that's why I had so much respect for him because for him, it was about ex exchanging spiritual when you're here and you meet somebody that you also think is here and you want to just ex exchange spiritual. He did it to your mind. Right. Not mind fuck. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? But, but let me know what, Wait, wait. But you know what, though? A lot of people don't know that side of him. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's what I was about they to don't say. Know that yep. side of him. It's good you told that story because a lot of people get caught up in what they see on TV. And, you know, they, get, they never get to meet the man. The real. They think it's all a gimmick. You know, we came from the era, uh, our generation, where what we was talking about was actually real life. There was no gimmick. So what you see is what you get. Right. So one thing about DMX when I was young, because we was all young at the time. Uh -huh. You know, I didn't, I didn't see none of that. You know, uh, the anger. And the thing is that when I met him as a man, man. Right. That's when I got the opportunity to see that God blessed us to be able to uh, squash our situation in a positive way and to be able to move on. He was such a man about it and he earned my full respect. Like he earned your full respect then. You know, yeah, but, so. you know X was praying from a dark spot. You know what I mean? And he let us know that it's okay to pray from that dark spot. 
and mm. still be blessed. Mm. You know what I mean? So I respect him on that alone. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm going to jump off. You know what I mean? It's great to see you. you have to jump you know off. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm here, but we wiggling around, doing our thing. This got it. Oh, yeah. You know it's what I'm my, saying? Uh, anniversary weekend. It's me and Lily's one year anniversary on Sunday. So yeah, so we chilling. came to yeah. barbecue and cook today. Chilling. Yes. Love. But out of respect, you know what I mean? For a real solid brother, because the world is changing. We done lost Nip. We done lost Kobe. We done lost so many people. You know what I mean? Real people. And once this thing, hopefully it gets cracked all the way back open, it's gonna look so different because a lot of people is missing. So out of respect, if we can, just give DMX just a quick moment of silence, just out of respect, yes. you know what I mean? All right, let's go. Dark Man X, Yonkers, all the way to Compton. So what do you guys think about the fact that they're consistently saying that he was on life support. It kind of reminds me of Singleton when we thought he was passed over, but every time the press made a release, they were saying he was on life support. In my opinion, it seems like they're trying to uh, cross their T's and dot their I's before they announced that someone has passed over. Like I, I heard DMX had like 12 kids. 15. 15. Oh, cut it out. So all of them were not by his wife. No. So possibly in the same way that we know Singleton had multiple kids. These men, our men, our wealthy black men are clearly not preparing for death leaving wills, um, determining who's going to inherit what, because we know he was married and his wife and his children by his wife are entitled, but the other, maybe she had four or five, maybe even six, but then what about the other seven? Like when you don't leave a will, gentlemen, daddy, you got a will? Of course not. I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So what's going to happen? I'm old school. I put the letter and put it in the freezer. You remember that? Yeah. And everything you want to freeze <laughs> is froze. Boom. That's when I'm gone, all I got to do is look in the freezer, and that's going to tell you everything you I'm need to do. I'm up to date, do. more technical technology. <laughs> I have a will. You do. Yes. Brother, oh, yes. Go make sure everything, because I plan on going before them. And kids that have instruction. So I got that, but, you know, I know there's a lot of I people. I have a will in a way. Yeah. And I really thoroughly believe it's, you know, your mate, because, you know, some of us are behind. And if marriage is business, yeah, but God, gotta have a God will, I mean, God I will and live this as far as you can. can. But then when, I mean, if anything was sure. to happen to you, right? Um, you know, your wife has to do the right thing. Like Prince. The title. You and know, Prince didn't leave a will, so now his whole family is fighting. But see, to the like, point where the government has come in and taken over and taken a big chunk of his, you know, estate. Like, how can you take his estate? Why? Because he did not leave a will. First of all, Prince didn't have structure. He had talent. Okay. Men have a wife. When you get a wife in your life, you get blessed in abundance. Then you get structure and a real foundation. When you do like these guys with just talent, you get a bunch of money, which ain't shit, unless you know how to spend it. Then they don't even have businesses. Right. So what they do is die. And whether you're married or not, banking is business, marriage is business. Right. So if you don't got that shit in writing, good right. fucking luck. Your mama's house ain't yours if she didn't write that shit down. This is what I know. Right. I have property. But right. a lot of people may not know it. They're going to find out when their mama die. Or yeah. they wife die, yeah. or, they, they die. or they die, or they husband and wife, and they didn't write the shit. It's business. Got to write everything down. People got to have a conversation that they don't want to have. They got to have that life insurance plan. That's yeah. serious. You know, yeah. you'll spend that $50 on some weed, some shoes, whatever. Not on you know a what month saying? for what? Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't leave the kids holy church socks. You got to have something in the cup for them. 
from. You know what I mean? So, and you don't want to be at leaving them with car washes and all that type of stuff. So but if you gotta you have like insurance, you want them to have the car washes. Like for me, right. I have a whole GoFundMe. bulk of film that if I pass away, it's in my Screen Actors Guild um, uh, stuff that it will go to my husband and my son. And I trust that oh. they will share with my mother. You know, it's already written down that it goes to them. That's that, found, that's that foundation. You got to have somebody that you trust, that you know if it go pear shaped that it's going to get handled. But like, you know I mean? that's like, game. but like DMX and Singleton, you know, I feel like these brothers were gone before we knew they were gone, but the family wanted to extend that to give them time to get all the P's and Q's in order. I think and, a you know, rough decision. You have to, you have to pull the plug to say goodbye to a father, a husband, a friend, brother. You know what I mean? I think that's a, I think that's the coldest decision ever. You know what I mean? So only God knows what happened. You know, we can read what's going on in the tabloids and, and social media and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, only God knows what happened. If it was the COVID, if he had a heart attack from this, you know what I mean? The fact of the matter is- Now, you know, how did you think he looked on Versus? Because Hubby was like, he looked good, but I was like- I think he looked good. Did and, you know, he kept disappearing, like- no, he had to pee, you know what I'm saying? But his, but his wind and his, and, his, and, his, and his body looked good. He looked good, even with that salt and pepper. He was rocking. I guess because I know him, I saw that something was not right. Like, mm. I don't know. He just looked a little too winded and tired. He's 50 like, years old now. But that you know, you go rock for Lollapalooza every week. You'll be tired too. We, I'm old. <laughs> we, we do the damn thing. Ain't no such thing as old. Hey, look. He got how many kids? That means he got to deal with all those women. And he got to keep us happy with this good music. Yeah, person gets tired. Oh, got it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> ah. I mean, you know, if you would notice, he had that gut, too. So, Wendy, we don't know what he was going through. Like, do I believe he was on drugs? I really don't. He looked too healthy to be on drugs. He had that gut, which means he was eating good. He, he was on drugs. Well, I don't, you know, we don't know that. We can't say it. We wasn't there. Okay, well, let's it's just say he was on drugs. Let's just say who? We, he was on drugs, and he suffered a heart attack due to drug addiction. But that's not real. But that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they're saying, and what they're saying isn't real. So you don't believe it was coke induced? I don't think so. You know, I think that he was trying his best to stay on the straight and narrow. Uh, he looked like he was doing that because he had that weight. You know, you, you're on drugs. You look like you're on drugs. He didn't look like he was on drugs. Dude. He looked like he was uh, eating good. He also looked like, yeah, you know, he was heavy. You know what I'm saying? Smoking cigarettes, though, you know, that could take away cigarettes. <laughs> I'm just saying that could take away your breath. Plus the fact that you got to also understand he's hyperactive. If you will notice, D, he don't just, yeah, so you know what's up. No, D is like, hey, huh, eh. that takes a lot of energy. It takes your breath. So, I mean, even when he talks to you. Well, you know what I'm mean? saying? He's talking a normal conversation and you be like, yeah, so D, this is that, and that's this, and this. And that. Yeah, well, you know what? When we do it, I want to do it this way. And, and, and there's no whole bar. I'm so just look, that's his normal way of talking. So, right. so all during this, he's talking. Then he gets on the mic. You know what I'm saying? I could see how he could be out of breath because when he's talking normally, all the time before we saw him on camera, he was talking to people, chilling and relaxing. He was, he's always in performance mode. You know, he's always talking aggressively. It requires a lot of breath. It requires a lot of whoops. So when you get on the mic, yeah, he would be out of breath. He's been, he's been talking to people normally like he was performing. Wow. I mean, that's what I get from him. Cause even when I talk to him in the airport, 
he was talking the same way. You know, people turning around looking. He wasn't yelling. He's just talking, but that's the way he is. So that takes a lot of breath. So well, no, I don't believe that he was on drugs. Unless he for me, I, I can believe he was on cocaine because I saw our beliefs are just cocaine before. You know, our beliefs are just opinions. My opinion, your but I've opinion. seen him take but cocaine. It's not, but it's not fact. I've seen him take cocaine, and that's a fact. And I have never been the type of person that judge, judges people that snort cocaine. I personally don't like cocaine because I don't like that drip. I don't like the way it tastes. And I find that people who like weed rarely like cocaine because it's, it's two different highs. And I'm a weed head. So cocaine has never been something that turned me on. Yeah, I can I can't I can't relate because and I've never I, done cocaine. I feel like, you know, sometimes people make a choice when between drinking and cocaine. And drinking is a suppressant, you know, um it 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 is a, a downer, a depressant, whereas cocaine is an upper. So I'm feeling like maybe the two together kept him stable. But sometimes people give up one to stop drinking and then do cocaine. You know, you, you don't want to give it all up one at a time. And, well, I mean, and but, 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 but you got to understand, Paula, majority of these things is introduced through fun and the game. So, you know, when you young, most people start this type of thing when they're young and having fun and don't think, you know, you, there's not a choice to it. You know, besides the fact that you're here at this party, everybody's doing something and you're, that's not your cup of tea, right? A lot of people you would talk to that don't come to uh, if my people kids, that you talk okay, to, Paul, might put it in my mouth and numb a little. Uh, I don't want to be a people, right. But a lot of people who done cocaine, and I'm sure you can relate. Right. You know, they never done cocaine before. That's not their cup of tea. Right. They do what they do, but they're not into no drugs like that. Right. Somehow they was introduced to it, and they made a choice. You see what I'm saying? That hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh. They're partying, they're having fun, and like you said, I don't want to be the square. All right, let me just try it. And at one time is a lifetime. And so that's the key to the game. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, I don't think he was off of any, I don't think he was off of any drug at that point in time because, you know, like I said, it's just, just my opinion. Because I don't to lose any more of our men due to a drug that is clearly not being um, cut right. I don't understand how, you know, it was Friday night, which meant we were doing our show. Right. And he was being rushed to the hospital. And I know he, he loves me and I know he loves you. And I know it wasn't about us. I don't know what he was doing, but for me, I feel like we got to stop. Because it feels like nobody cares anymore. Like I'm looking at this fentanyl that they were saying that um, George Floyd was on. And now, you know, they're saying it was drug induced, his heart attack. And, you know, you talked about it yourself. And yeah, I mean, if, you, if, you have, if you have your Bullshit. knee on. If you have your knee on somebody's neck, whether they're taking drugs or not. No, corrupt. I'm talking to you. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like Floyd, okay, he was on whatever. That's the problem. That's why you don't imply this whoop wop, this particular hold or this particular whoop wop. Because you don't know if the guy, if you think the guy, if, if the bottom line is the police thought he was on drugs. Am I correct? The, the doctors. So therefore, if you thought, well, the police is who killed him because whatever they did induced the game. If you know he's on drug, you got to deal with him. A certain you're, talking about, you're talking about George now. 
Yeah. I'm talking about damn. Well, you brought George up, so I just wanted to address that. The bottom line. Yeah, we're definitely going to go back there. But I'm just saying, I feel like these drug uh, people should go to jail. Like, who is selling people drugs that are not cut right? Like, I'm not promoting oh, 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 drugs. Paula, Paula, it's <laughs> illegal. But Paula, it's illegal to sell drugs. So people that are selling drugs and from somewhere are, are going to jail, Paula. It's illegal to sell drugs. Well, are they are they trying to kill our people? What's going on? I mean, making, if you buy, Paula, they're making, I don't even know they're if making, they eight they're, rocks. They're making people. money selling a product. And you know, it's all karma. Everything comes around, you know what I'm saying? What you dish out is what eventually you're gonna get. Well, and so, get you know, I mean, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, right? Well, to be honest with you, you know, uh, we really can't speak on the streets. The streets is gonna do what they have to do to survive. And that's what that is. A person has a choice to take that drug. And, and you know, they're making that choice. So. If, when they go down, they made that choice. We can't blame the person who asks you, do you want to sip of alcohol? You have a choice to say no. We're giving too many passes to people who say yes. And we want to concentrate on the person that's giving it to them. You have a choice, okay? But do you- now, I don't like Ronald Reagan too much. I don't like Ronald Reagan too much with his whole wop wop because he stopped the after school programs. He wasn't the greatest president on earth, but his wife had a point. Just say no. Because what everybody else was approached with, I was. Now alcohol got me, mushrooms got me. And I had my little dibble dabble with ecstasy pills, right? But you know, the one that stayed the most was alcohol that I continue to say yes with. But the other drugs, I said no. When I was offered cocaine, I said no. And ain't no other drug have been offered to me because ain't nobody that's stupid. Yes. So as, it, it's in it's in the person. But let's be honest. As a rap star, these types of drugs are offered to you guys just on the whim. Like here, I love you, corrupt. Take an eight ball. Here, I love you, corrupt. No, no eight balls. You know what I'm saying? That now, see that's that's not right. Oh, yeah, but, we, we're not in the neighborhood, okay? That's that's a hood, that's a hood boo bop. You know, we around people that are extinguished people. I mean, they are. You know, they're known. They're yes. fun. Hey, man. You know, everybody loves them. And has ever come up to you like, here, corrupt. Take this eight ball. No, a fan came up and said, "Hey, you you want a, a two? A fan has came up and said. A two, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, the fan has came up, you know, eight ball ain't what they use, you know, that's in the what is that? What is an eight ball? Eight ball. I mean, you hit you hit them with eight eight ball is you know that's that's hood drugs. What is like, that? It's not cocaine, a big rock of cocaine is in the eight all coke. Yeah, right. Nobody offers you an eight ball. What is you that know, for you? In the community we in, they have for you a line, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you wanna do a line? A line? What the hell are you gonna they do with a line? You know what I'm saying? They offer you that type of shit. But see, you gotta understand that that's the start. A little line, a little sniff. The next thing you know, you elevate. Everything is elevation. I started off with, you know, drinking beer. And then from there, elevated, escalated. How old were you when you had your first beer? You know what, 10 years old? 10 years old? Who gave you a beer at 10 years old? Shit, my family, you know, I had an uncle that was about it, about it. Boy, you know, here, you know what? Here, take a little sip of this. All right, give me that back, boy. You know, <laughs> I got a little beer, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I thought I was doing something. Wow. Yeah, you know, but you know, he was having fun. Majority of these things are introduced to you through a good time. And like you said, and you said it yourself, I don't want to be the nerd. I don't want to be the right, and I don't want people to feel uncomfortable because because I don't want that stuff up my nose. And then, and I don't want them to be, and I don't want them to feel like I'm judging. So yes, I admit I will do a freeze, but I don't like stuff going up my. Nose. I don't even so, like that. So you did the freeze. You did the freeze, right? You did the freeze with no understanding that that freeze could have elevated somewhere else. 
because you know, dog, I don't, you I don't like no, but you survived, and there was a time when you said no. Yeah, and I you always care about, you didn't care about you didn't care about what another person thought. Right. So you gotta understand they catch you at the vulnerability time, and they not they not catching you like uh, intentionally trying to get you on something. They're having fun and they want you to have fun. You know, it ain't fun if you're doing something all by yourself. But you know, it, it's hard to say no when everybody's doing it. And, and I was one of those people, I was one of those people that always went against the grain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, you went, no, I'm cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people well, aren't like- That's your advice. The yeah. best way is to just say no. Just be yourself. Uh, you know, you gotta just be yourself because if it ain't you, don't do it. Trust me, you'll love me later. Just don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you ain't all to be hip is the thing of the day. It and, the, and, the, and the reality you. is, you gotta know, like, look, and, and as a child, as a kid, you don't get this confidence. It's, it's rare. Some people have that confidence where they could just resist anything. Then you have others who, you know, it's, it's hard to not want to be accepted. You know what I'm saying? And you want to be accepted. So you'll do things that you would normally never do, but Does you'll it do it to like be- more creative or something? Like we, like I'm a wee head because I read my script and I'll, okay. And I find a whole nother lane and a way to, you know, express because I feel like it comes from the earth. And that's the point. It's okay, the but when you so first I smoked your first, when you smoked your first piece of herb, you did not have this theory. Well, you didn't smoke it because you saw. I smoked weed. I'm just saying, wait, wait, before you go into that, you did not it. smoke oh, it. Before you go into that, you did not smoke it because you had knowledge of where it came from. Well, you didn't I smoke first time I smoked weed no. was because I was going to go to Howard University. And I knew it was a weed head school. And I wanted to try it. So my boyfriend gave me my first joint. Little right. did I know he had laced it with Coke. So, Ooh, so you had turbo. They called those turbos back in the East. Turbo. Coast. So my so first was joint cool. was a turbo. So I was Not like, people. yeah. And then I went to Howard and everything I've smoked ever since. You thought we was bomb. I, well, I couldn't, and, and, you was on, and you was secretly on cocaine. Yes. So I went back after the first, after my freshman year. And I was like, dude, there's hey, nothing in the world that was as good as clean. Hey, when a person lace your, your joint, <laughs> what's that called? It's not a primo? No, it's a primo. That's what it's called a in the West Coast. A primo. See, and in the coast, that's a primo. You I, got cocaine I, and weed, we, you smoking a primo. I was like, I'm about to Cleveland, because the rest of the weed in the world, and he, that's when he told me, well, I did lace it with a little coke. And I was like, nigga. Damn, so your first experience, you experienced both at the same time. So, you know, your first experience, you killed two birds with one stone. Exactly. <laughs> So I could never go back to Cleveland and smoke with that nigga because that was too good. I was like, you know, that's the key to the game, you know. But as a youth, as a, but see, as a youth, you don't look at it like that. Like now, it's like I smoke weed because. Right. You know, back then, it was I smoke weed because. But it's, the reason why you smoked it back then was because, because. That you knew you was going to this hip place and they smoke weed at this hip place. Right. Right. That and was I, your reason. Now you have a different. Now you have a different reason. Yeah. Now you have a different reason. Uh, Paula, right. Now your reason is you understand the education of marijuana. You like the way it is, and to yourself, you don't consider it a drug. Right. But and they're all, but they're all drugs. Yeah. Even even cigarettes Weed, can be tobacco, a drug. Cocaine, heroin. LSD, any of those type of things, all of those know are why people want to do something alcohol that make them look alcohol. crazy. Alcohol is alcohol. So they're all just, you know, bottom lines is what I deal with. All shit. But moderation is God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all know this, but I sip. Let's look at Mama drink. What is it though? 
Hennessy. Hey, oh my God. That's right there. Take me brandy. Cognac. Oh my God. So now, you see, know. now cognac, I can see, see how you off the cognac. Cognac is reverse psychology with you because me. No, you be on that damn tequila like you. That's nowadays, but when Tupac was alive, Hennessy was the drink of the day. See, Snoopy and Dr. Dre brought the gin and juice to the table. Okay. So I, I couldn't do that. I, I tried it. I eight I ball like tried. Eight. Sipping on gin and juice. And I then when, Pop, and when Pop came home, Pop brought Hennessy to the table. Come on. Okay. And see... It just brought out a different man in me. Pop I told sent you to me. an angry person every time with the Hennessy. I got angry. Pop sent me um Cristal. He, wow. never, he, he just sent it to me. And this is when Pac was about what 24? Mm -hmm. How was I when he passed over? That was he was 25 then. That's Isn't that crazy? Because you would think of Pac like he was older, but he, he was 25 years. I have the privilege of being summoned by Tupac the day before we all went to um, Vegas. Right. And um, he didn't give me the answer. He, 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 he sent me a bottle of um, Cristal, like the high-end Cristal. What he, did was, what he did was he gave you that class because Hennessy, okay, and Pac was a believer in this. Hennessy's for the men. If it's a woman, you got to have class. See, Pac was about class. That's one of the Listen. things. Listen. That's one of the things he taught me. You right. know, because it's like, okay, we drink a Hennessy, everybody drink Hennessy, including the women. And Pac's like, no. Look, women, you give them something for the I don't care. I feel he very like, classy. I give women, I mean, he said, I give women champagne, and us men, we drink the Hennessy. If she wants Hennessy, I'll hook her up. But right. Hennessy, of course, niggas. And Champagne is for the lady. But I do believe that people don't understand the, the quality of, you're supposed to sip liquor. You're not supposed not, to- Not drink, not count it. Yeah. But you do understand this as well. People also don't understand- The whole night. <laughs> but people also don't understand the class about things because Hennessy C, uh, it's turned ghetto nowadays. Why? Because we're drinking it? The way we're drinking it. Like you said, we're, sipping, we're downing. We're drinking liquor. We're drinking Hennessy like a 40 ounce. No. Okay? You, 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 we're drinking out the bottle. That's no class. First of all, Hennessy is from France. It's a cognac. Right. Cognac is a French. Right. It's brand. It's French. So it's a class. Brandy, all that type. Of, so when you, when you have it in there, you sip and chill. You don't, you don't, you don't pour it right. like shots. You know, this, this right. is what I'm talking about. Hennessy as a cognac has been changed from the class of the cognac of it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's called cognac. And Hennessy is just a type of cognac. So what can cognac. we leave our audience with? You as a rapper who grew up you know, with DMX, as I did as well. And we're still here. And, you know, I'm so sad that he's not. But what can we glean from this so that we're still here and makes the mo we make the most of still being here and well, leaving something for the people to understand that that ain't cool. Right. I don't, I don't want y'all to think that, you know, me freezing was, you know, I was just trying to be hospitable. I don't want people to think if somebody's sitting there on a crack pipe, I had a hairdresser who used to do a crack pipe and I'd be like, oh, well, whatever, just make sure you do my hair right. And, and it would get done like Let me ask you a question. What would make you think, even though she probably was tight and could do no, that? No, to do. Well, even though he was tight and he could do that. You know, if a person's on a crack pipe, see, you made a decision. He's on the crack pipe, but he could do good hair. So you let so you let a smoker do your hair. 
What was I supposed to do? Say, put out your crack pipe? You motherfucking right. You have a choice. And that's what we can do. I'm going to answer your question with what I just answered yours with. This is how you can save yourself. And that's what it's about, saving yourself. You got to be real. We can't, you can't save nobody, Paula. They got to want to save okay, Well, there was a time, one time, Taraji and I, we were getting driven by a limo guy who was drunk as shit. But he drove the shit out that damn limo. Like some people drive better drunk. But to ride, well, we he went to the also, Paula, now also, let's just think that what they think, keeping it real and keep it real. You drive with a drunk limo driver, right? You have a higher chance. Chance to die. Exactly. So, you understand what I'm saying? And and that was and one of the things. You got to understand as, as an on. adult, as a grown person, right. things to lose. Right. You limit your chance. She had a son at the time. My, I didn't have a son yet. Yeah, I mean, you can have right. a child. Right. But, but does, that does, register, you... does it register that? You know, I got a child. So having a child, when it registers, I can't do the same thing I was doing when I didn't have a child. Right. Any responsibility. Right. So she did not think about her child when she allowed Cuz to drive that car. Well, she, she was she in. I need to pull she could have easily said, now we don't do this, right? When we uh, have fun and enjoy ourselves, so we don't do the, so, so, so she was basically just like you when you wanted to smoke weed to be a part of this woo -wop. She basically she took that chance because she wanted to have a good time with Paula have a good time for herself. She wanted, to have, she wanted to have a good time more than she cared about. And his responsibility. Was, hey, and we all done that. We've right. all, that's why, you know, I was an alcoholic. You know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm still recovering. And, and that's, that's a lifelong thing. DMX was in his situation where he had to deal with drugs. Hey, cuz. You know what I'm saying? I'm having way too much fun. I love it. Tell them to all come in the in the thing so we can laugh too. Hey, chill. So my okay. So so now I say laugh. Just me for myself. Hey y'all, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me act a fool. Oh guys, I'm very very hurt. Where's chill at? Tell me hot ass over here. She's what been requested. I don't think. <laughs> Wait, I don't even movie? understand how it works anymore. But let let's invite. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know what it is, Paula. You know what? God first. We say it all the time, but do we live it? And you know, God first, man. And also, you know, you got to be wise. Now, where's Cook the Crook? My bad. I had to go get a can opener. Derek, you hot, big head, mouth. Where are you, first of all? Where I'm at the are house. you? Derek, you don't want none on this Madden. Hey, Derek, where are you at? You know, we got to our show. Well, we got to find out where Derek at, because he's always someplace new and exciting. Derek, where are you at right now? I'm at the house. I'm at the crib. Oh, so that's exciting. You finally got to spend some time with yourself. <laughs> First of all, I want to apologize to you, Corrupt. Last week, when we had Bentley on, you set him up so beautifully. Well, and happened? you asked me to say, oh, we're supposed to be <laughs> Corrupt. I apologize. What happened? What happened, Paula? You set me up. You set Bentley up so beautifully, like a professional. And I was so into trying to get the questions together, I missed the beautiful setup. And I just want to apologize. For what was the setup? It's forum. So do you want to do our forum? Hi, I'm Paula J. Parker. And, and I'm corrupt. Yeah, OK, I get it. Look, and I'm corrupt, OK? And what is this, Paula? Wait, it's I did the line. <laughs> hey. This is the form because this is for them. Yes. This is for y'all. Touch. Touch. Please. We're going to get it together, people. You understand me? One thing about me and Paula's thing is we're real. 
You know what I'm saying? And the one thing that we do is make sure that we don't have when keeping it real goes goes wrong. wrong. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, where's Derek? I was gonna ask him if he had a DMX story. Like I said, where you at, Derek? You know what I'm saying? He's not right here. Not Derek. You got a DMX story for us? Nah, I don't got no DMX story. Yeah, you do. You played his music. You love his music. You got a story. I was rolling to his music and I crashed. What's your story, fool? <laughs> I see. I see. I see. Y'all got Jodeci back together. Uh, uh, <laughs> which one is JoJo? Yeah. Which one? Hey, nigga, we the dirty OGs, nigga. We <laughs> I knew Weezer was gonna say so. Hey, that's yeah. KC, cuz. <laughs> Yeah. I'll be honest with you, they say, they say I'm KC, they say I'm like KC. You know that's my family, right? So they be like, oh man, you look just like KC. You know, and I, I say- you know Derek, what? you look yeah. like Teddy Pender ass. <laughs> Turn off the lights. <laughs> like, I think me and you could be Tina and Ike. Well, eat the cake, anime. Any day, any day, anime, eat the cake. Like, okay. I you see what? everybody get the fuck out of here. You know what? Like, who been dropping their cools on my floor? Hey, who been dropping their cools on my floor? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? What about the band, Paula? What about the band? I don't know. What about them? But well, what about the band? So, okay, Derek, you have no story that you'd like to say, like maybe. One of the songs inspired you to. Nah, he was a good rapper. Okay. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, DMX. You know what I mean? I don't really have no story. You know? I love this music. We all do. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we what about our brothers back there, they already gave their stories um, regarding. Well, DMX. ask the people, what story do they have? about right. I, I can't find the people. Uh, you know, one thing about it, I watched something on DMX and how you know everybody loved him. He would pray. I saw it. My husband told Forrest said at the end of a concert he went to, DMX started praying and started crying. And this was like in 2000, <laughs> testifying right on stage as to you know. I hey, did you see him on um that thing that Kanye was doing, the Sunday service? Oh no, tell us about it. Oh, you gotta go check that out on uh, I will. YouTube or something. It's Can you amazing. Tell us a little bit about it. What what um what? I I just seen it for the first time today and the choir was just singing so beautiful, you know what I mean? And his his prayer was just was so moving and touching. Mm -hmm. It's something to see. You know what I mean? From a guy like that, because right. you know, DMX is a guy like us. You can believe him, like you know. These, you know, traditional preachers, they be bigger creeps than people ever thought we was, you know what I mean? So a guy like that praying from that dark spot, like I was saying earlier, you gotta believe it. You know what I mean? You gotta believe it. And it's heartfelt. So check that out, you know what I'm saying? DMX yeah, because I'm gonna service. tell you like Raz Cass said, <clears throat> like he said about these preachers, some of these preachers, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 these rappers nowadays, are they great spitters? They asked me that question. Are these rappers these days great spitters? Right. No. Okay. So let me ask. You, let me get. Let me, let me answer it. Does uh, Catholic preachers make good babysitters? <laughs> right. That's the point. <laughs> point scene money. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying. And the reality is, hey, I'm gonna tell you this. Everybody has something in their life. You know, that's an issue. What did you think about DMX as an actor? You're an actor. I Did love his acting. You know? um, What's that movie he was doing all that karate in? Wasn't he in Jelly? With Jet Li, huh? Yeah, with Jet Li. He did, yeah. movie with, uh, he did a movie with Jet Li. D DMX was doing action movies. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I Lee like Lee. Belly, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I did speak on Belly when I was upset. what I call it? Jelly? Yes, Belly. Call it Jelly, Paula. It's belly. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, wait. That's, that's a going, classic. Let's go to this, though. I told Paula my favorite Paula. Can I give a shout out to Malik Saeed Muhammad from Howard, who did the cinematography for Belly? Yes, I really enjoyed that movie. So go ahead, Corrupt. Give it up for him. 
Church have a nizzle. It was beautiful. That was a beautiful movie. And I think it was Hype. Hype Williams directed. Hype Williams. Hype was Williams is the man. Gorgeous movie. Now, chill. Uh, Weezy. So I was telling Paula, you know, my favorite Paula Woobop. You can't do it all because you're on camera. See these niggas, oh, they have man. no business at, I'm a, look, cuz you're a star right now. No, okay, figure it out, okay? Handle it, put it down, Jesse Brown. So look, you know, and I was telling Paula, you know, my favorite boop of Paula, you know, you get your favorite boop -op. Like uh, Jack Nicholson, my favorite thing from him is, honey, I'm home. From The Shining. Yes. I, you know, I love that, you know what I'm saying? And then there's there's Paul. Now Paula's thing was in Fridays. Awesome. And Paula said to there it is. You understand me? No, nah, mine's is no wait, hold on. The clock uh, finished. My mine's bad, cut, said, cut. Back, Nigga, see what we got there. Uh, you look, called me because he's he's ready though. Right. Because he knows us. Hello. Hey, look. Hello. How you doing? So, Jessica, nice hey to meet Jess. You. I mean, hello hey, one time. I want to meet Jess. Hi, Jess. Hey Jess, oh, say hi. what's up to my sis, Paula. Hey. <laughs> so, so Paula's my favorite Paula. Come on in, Jess. And Friday, right? Yeah. Where she came up on the whoop wop and Chris Tucker was there. He's down here doing something. I think he was rolling some good. And then she just pushed her hair back, whooping her hair. And then she said, Fool. Uh, right, 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 right. right. Was it. And that's what I'll be telling them. Been in a hundred other movies after that one. And the most memorable for me is, and it's like this, it's just like, it's Thank just like rapping. You. The way you start off sets your whole pace. You start off classic, yes, everything is classic after. With the hair movement, and I told her, I know that wasn't in the script. That was called improvising. Because it wasn't in the script, you move your hair back like this. No, that was Paula. All buyers. My favorite role. And then she said, boom. And Cuz looked up, huh? <laughs> Where's Craig? My favorite role from Corrupt was, I'm sorry, but in The White Sisters. Oh, shit. <laughs> you wait a on that you table that? And you said, boom, I am the you shit. You remember that? That shit was so called. And you don't understand how many people like, want to see that movie and talk about how great you were. You, Golden, did y'all's damn thing. You know, Lisa Wu, I think she surprised a lot of people too with her courage and so did um, my baby Elise. Um, and shout out and to Lisa Wu because she got on our show with that. Yes, and so, so much love. But like you, what movie was that when you was going, Harass, harass. Oh, what movie was that? I'll be a uh, minute to South Central while drinking your Man, that was right. so gosh darn funny. Oh my God, I fell out on the floor. Oh, there it is. Right, right. And mine's with his is when he I pressed mean. Dr. Dre uh -oh, <laughs> on the wash and Snoop was in the car for the leaving. That was when I was maniac. <laughs> she wanted to have all them kids on that hurts movie. Was yeah. yeah, she should make what's her, what's baby. No, that, that she not. She uh, went on the couch with all them babies. No, that's that was Rakishi. <laughs> that was Rock. You Dashiki? No, I ain't Dashiki. You Dashiki? Dashiki? You Dashiki? Home girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Home girl. Dashiki, right. wasn't it? I made that name up like right there on the spur. Like they didn't don't, don't drink your juice in the You was not chic. No, no, that was not chic. Oh, home girl. Home she was a home not right. chic. Home girl. Girl, girl like, that chic. Like it just the dookie, bro. I remember you, girl. You got that coke smile and kind of like white teeth, like you me. Motherfucking. Right. Oh. <laughs> you see what I gotta deal with, Paula? Do you see what I gotta deal? With? All love. All. Oh, this is anniversary. We having a good old time. And we gonna move on. Um. Let's talk about what's going on with this trial thus far, because I'm really getting a little upset by, you know, the way it's going. Um, this past week, they had a doctor on who was able to basically break down every single movement that our brother, um, George Floyd, experienced while being held down. Now, first of all, did y'all know that 
there were more people on top of him? Yeah. They got the footage out. Yeah, so have, have you seen the footage oh, where they showed the whole thing? The knee on the neck. Yeah. We had, I know, I, I saw other people there behind them, but I, I had no idea they were all, there were two more men putting their full weight on his body and his legs. Let me understand this. So if this guy gets convicted, he's probably going to be having manslaughter and that's probably it at the most. It'll be 10 years. And, if, and, and half of that is five years, PC'd up, good time, all that stuff. Of course, Four he's going to go to a real uh, uh, jail because they'll kill him. Right. They'll send him to a country club. Right. So in layman's terms, so much stuff be happening in the world, you can see it before it happened now, if you're paying attention. That's right. You know what I mean? So it's adamant or fair to say that it's going to be some shit this summer. Right. I mean, it's going to be some shit this summer when this case is done. Our people is going to lose it because we're tired. I feel like, you know, last week, Corrupt, we talked about the young man who rammed into the Capitol building barricade and jumped out. He rammed, we found out he rammed into cops. Like he just rammed into them and killed them, jumped out with the knife and wounded mm -hmm. another. Um, when we did find out he was a black man and he did indeed leave a quasi, I guess, internet message or post or whatever, whatever, Twitter post, um, that he was concerned with the FBI and the CIA and the fact that he didn't think we would get a fair trial. Right. So basically for him, it was an eye for an eye, like we talked about last week, correct? Right. Um, what do you think? Do you think that what he did was his way of trying to quell whatever outcome is going to happen with Chauvin? And the fact that he did take out a cop and a half, do you think that possibly will let it ride? I think that was his way of keeping us from being upset with what he knew was coming. That even if Chauvin does get in trouble, it's only gonna be a 10 year bid, if that. I think the laws have changed and I think people have changed. You gotta, you gotta say that if you say that, you know what I mean? If the laws have changed, then you gotta know people has changed too. Because like I said before, people are tired. It's more guns, right. it, it, you know, people are on drugs, people are fed up, people are this, that, the other, stressed out, depressed, whatever. You know what I mean? So that means the game has changed. Mm -hmm. I think eventually it's gonna be a whole lot of hurting because we hurt, you know what I mean? And I, I, I hope that it don't turn into a racial situation because I have a lot of white friends that I call niggas. You know what I'm saying? But at oh, the shit. same, yeah, I do. You know what I'm saying? They grew up with us all their life. They don't know nothing about that. You know what I mean? You ain't never seen none of them. Yeah, they grew up right in Compton, right on my block. You know what I mean? Yeah, them is white niggas. Nigga. You know I mean? But at the same time, I think it's going to be some shit. You know what I mean? Just like the laws is changing, people are changing as well. You know what I mean? We just got to keep our eyes peeled and just be ready for the get down. I am, you know, so you we got to be, gotta be like, I am legend ready. Feel like if Chauvin is released or if he's convicted, the fact that that brother gave his life to try to equalize the situation, do you think that will quell whatever the outcome is? I think he'll go down as a hero. I think so too. But do you I think, think he'll go down? Either way, if he's convicted or not, he'll go down as one of our heroes. Well, do you think if Chauvin, it doesn't turn out our way, are you are you thinking there's going to be some kind of repercussions? Do you think it's going to? It's going to be some shit if this dude get 10 years. But that's that's the most he's going to get, even if he it's, is. It's going to be some shit. Because for one, you got these Black Lives Matter people, and then you got these real Black people in the streets. You feel me? It's gonna be some shit. Some and it might be white people that set it off. It might be white people that set it off. 
white people out here acting crazy these days. You know what I mean? All I'm gonna say is just be ready for the get down, whether you're gonna be securing your house or the front line. Be damned if we don't. Because if he's convicted, 10 years is all he's gonna get. And he's gonna be in an El Chapo jail with stakes and you know, party and chilling. He right. ain't gonna do no hard time at all. They protect okay. it. I never understood when a police died, they just glorify it. He's a human just like us. You know what I mean? I don't understand that. So I don't know why they put peace officers at, ahead of regular humans, but they're supposed to be the land of the free. Okay. That don't seem so free to me. To me, um, why when the black man ran into the barricade and ran over a cop, mental health issues were brought up. But when a white cop puts his knee on a man's neck and shimmies till he's dead. He's doing his job. No mental health. I believe anybody who kills has mental health issues. Right. If you take a life, you got some, it's not that easy to pull a trigger. It's not that easy to choke, so it's not that killing, taking a life is not an easy deed. So anyone has mental health issues that takes a life. So why are we not addressing Chauvin's mental health issues? But we wanna call the black man who ran into the white cop mental health issues. Yeah, I mean, it's just the way it's set up for us. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's been raw and uncut since day one, and now we're getting it live and direct. You know what I mean? That's the only answer that I can really fathom, because either way, it ain't going to be fair for us. But the only thing I do know is he will be a hero, whether it's mental issues or not. You know what I'm saying? Because he did that and took one for the team. It is mental health issues. And if oh, it yeah. Is and mental health is very serious. It's a lot of that going on, you know what I mean? But just to throw the blame on us, that's the norm. We got to be used to a lot of this type of stuff. We, we got to take the short end of the stick. We used to it. You so, feel what I'm saying? What about somebody else? Cabot, what do you think? Is it mental health issues when so does it? It's not. But when the black man does it, he's crazy. But when show when the cops take a life, it's line of duty. To me, Chauvin displayed mental health issues. And I think that that is something that is not being addressed with these cops. They're crazy. Look, that motherfucker ain't mentally ill. He's a racist bastard. Isn't and that mentally and, ill? Nah, but he's more sane. Mentally ill people you can have compassion for. You can't have I compassion. You're talking about the police with George Floyd. I think you're talking about guns. That the pig did, did it. That note, cause sure. I ran into the pigs. Oh, the nigga who did that? Yeah, he's gonna be saying that he's not. crazy. He's a lone wolf. Don't represent with him. Crazy, but Chauvin's not. Is my question. Why is it? First of all, mental health is not. We can't. You have to show. You have to realize. Somebody crazy is not the same as mental health. Mental health is what when you diagnose professionals. Right. When you're acting a fool in the streets, that's crazy. Okay. That's different. Somebody okay. with mental health, you're not gonna really call crazy. It's like calling somebody retarded or something. Well, that's what they're so, trying to do. They're trying to blame mental health on him. On the pig, on the brother. On the brother. Looking like this. Like, he was smiling at the black dude like, yeah, I'm killing him, and I'm looking you in your eyes while I'm shimmying, shimmying with his well, head. You know, he already was a guy that had a, a past history of police uh, exactly. brutality. You know what I mean? So I think it's normal to him. You know what I mean? After a person kill a, a bird, then a cat, then a dog, oh, you know what I mean? There's you know, mental it's, health it's, issues. After a person does that, then how can you be mad at him when he turns into Jeffrey Dahmer? I mean, sociopaths, sociopaths, psychotic people, they start in some place. You know, it's not mental, Ill, mentally ill. Look, man, mentally ill. Racism is mental ill. Mentally ill is something that basically, um, you know, uh, can, be people. At, can be looked at. If you mentally person, ill, it's something that you person, might not be able to control, right, per se. If you're mentally if you, ill, if you that's something you can't control. control. Not mental. We all can't talk. Well, you know, mentally it's ill. Correct, so then let's let. Yeah, mentally ill, like Weasel said, it's something you can't control. You know, 
when a person say, hey, man, I just can't help it, you know, I just can't help killing people. That's crazy. That's, that's, a, that's crazy. That is from the doors. It's a cop out. And he's been educated or he knows the system that once you're busted, everybody plays the insanity whoop whoop to get a lighter wop wop. So, I mean, this game has been played out so many different times. You can't help somebody who has an impulsion to just chop people to bitches and pieces. And then say, oh, you know what? Uh, I can't help myself like son of Sam. Hey man, I can't help it. The devil told me to do it. That's not mentally ill, cuz that's basically, you know, uh, that's a cop out. Okay. Basically, oh, no. You gotta say gangster. That's a guarantee. Yeah, that's weasel. That's weasel. What weasel. What are you gonna say, baby? Mentally ill is not crazy. Mentally ill is a diagnosis from a professional doctor. These rogue pigs are under oath. They've been trained, supposedly, to do what's right. So them motherfuckers is mentally ill in one aspect of it, but they're a little bit more sane. They narcissists, racist motherfuckers. Right. Wait, pause, Jigger. They can't, they're not mentally ill. Who? The Who? police is. First of all, you, you don't, you you don't, don't make, make my point for me or you want You don't to. take a Let job. Let doctor do it. Wait, hold on. Where you go? Who <laughs> like your point? Hey, look. Hey, no yeah, I mean, it's got an argument. Hey, right, look. Hey, look. You have a job, okay? Okay? You've already went through all the motherfucking mental illness bullshit. That's how you get the job. You can't get this job if you're mentally <laughs> mental fucked health up. Mental health classes. It's all, you it's can't all get kind the of job levels. if you're mentally <laughs> fucked up. Now, if you are mentally fucked up during the job this is the problem hey let's take them take somebody to talk to maybe they'll get better sorry you're unfit to be a police once the job gets to you and you're fucked up we're gonna pay for you to go to somebody to talk to you are fired let me okay. tell you something. That's it. It's all kind of levels of, 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 of mental illness. It's not just one. You got a person that's basically handicapped. You know what I mean by it? Then you have people that has a, a word called PTSD. You know right, right. I mean, right. Post syndrome right. disorder. Exactly. That means they used to being on some bullshit. Or had a around some bullshit. <laughs> and and they, it, they, it, they used to that goddamn shit. They shouldn't have became a police and the police hired them should have already seen that and they can all eat a, a mental D-I-C-C. When you are in a job, when you're consistently violent, even our athletes need someone to talk to to bring them down so they don't go home and beat their wives' asses. We've consistently seen that happening. Are the cops getting that same medical mental attention is my question no, because somebody to has to see that this man is cuckoo i the police is when you are like that yeah they send you to somebody to talk to to get that boob box my thing is when you're cuckoo like that and you have to send them to that person as they go to that person they need to be fired. they need to be fired That's no it. they suspend them with pay with pay so they need to be fired Okay. okay, you need to be fired. You're not suitable for this job anymore. We you can't fire all for people people. who cannot piss and hold their dick. We, huh? well, <laughs> I don't have a penis, but uh, I, I'm not talking about you. We talking about these mentally ill guys, dumbass my men. Husband I don't know too girl. I don't know too many female cops. I don't know female cops. I don't know too many female cops that's killing men. I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, heck, okay, you're not getting held accountable for it because they right. females or something. Okay, look, female cops. Let me did tell not you the answer. Kill George. The answer female is cops did not kill that old man look, that was running. The female answer cops is did, who they kill. They're not being reported. Uh, this this stuff is him? just now really being televised. You do know that. <laughs> no, it's not just man. It's 2000 because it should have been televised since 2000. But everybody has a computer everybody. in their hand now. Just, right. Just rip because it out. 2001. The year before George was shimmied to death, another man in Minnesota, Minneapolis, was shimmied to death. And they took that shimmy out of the, the Minneapolis police force. You know, it was, it was deemed illegal. They shut that down. So right. we know that George is not the first one to get shimmied. He's the first one we captured on film. 
So that also yeah, lets me know. He's, he's, he's one of the ones that got caught up. And see, the thing we is, can't, we so can't many forget Rodney with, King. But with all this social 20 media. 20 years ago, though. Look, all this social media and all. Have happened. Stuff, all this social media, sis, and uh, uh, Paula, all of this, uh, they catch it on camera, mic shit, the phones and all the rest of that. You'll never be able to catch it all. Okay, the well, let's being, talk about if you, that. If you ever, hold on, hold on, sis. The point being is that if you catch one, then, boom. then you have to automatically That's assume one. using your instinct if this one has been caught, right? There has to be hundreds of thousands. Exactly. Of in this big old world we live in. And that goes from overseas to here. There I have to be hundreds of thousands of unseen, unreported situations. If this one got caught, it's the law of the land. I don't believe they're giving these cops the I don't believe that they should get that. I don't believe that they should get any of it. They took an oath. They they signed on the dotted line. They can hold their composure. They keep the once they but honey, once they break that easy. contract, they need to go. It's that very easy. easy. Look, cuz you sign this contract and go home. It's not that easy to do. No, 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 no. You kill somebody, you kill somebody, you kill somebody, you need to be held accountable. Now, if they say you psychologically messed up, right? They, nine times out of 10, that ain't the first time they had signs exactly. of violence. The fact that they had the first sign of violence and they still stayed on duty and it was an unexplainable sign of violence they should have been relieved. Now, let me tell you another thing. Right. Remember that the blue, and I ain't talking about the Crips, the blue protect themselves. So, And they'll get rid of another cop if he breaks their mafia ties. Will they? Okay, because it seems to me like they've got this um, clicky thing going where no matter what, they'll watch each other's back. Paula, you've seen it in the films. You understand me? It's not a lie. The films aren't lying. The films got the education from off-duty police That's and right. other people on how the boys in blue act behind closed right. doors. Exactly. Right. It always comes to the light. Our parents taught that everything of all of that when yes. we were young. Whatever you do in the dark shall come to the light. When are we going to understand this? When are we going to uh, realize that what we were taught from our parents, silly, I mean, simple shit, like what goes around comes around. Simple right. shit, like right. there's nothing new under the sun. Right. Simple shit. When are we you going to me? When yeah. are we going to say, damn, you know, it's real. So, when do you say and stop asking questions you already know the answers to? Well, we all know, and and this was told to us right after George Floyd passed over. We got a whole bombardment of history that is not being brought up, at least not yet, in the trial. Like that George and Chauvin knew each other. They both worked at a club together as bouncers, as security guards. So Chauvin not only knew George, he knew George's woman. George's woman was a white woman. Do you think that had anything to do with Chauvin? A pretty white woman. I mean, if we go back in history, most black men were murdered because of a white woman. They may have looked at her supposedly whistled at her. But do you think that him knowing them both, him knowing, and I'm not even, this is my first question. We'll get into the counterfeit stuff next. But my first question is, he knew him. He knew his woman. I'm starting tomorrow. It's not brought up because it incriminates him. Boys in blue. Derek. Derek. Yeah. 
Yes. Now, I know we're a ghetto <laughs> show, but be professional, motherfucker. Put your phone on mute. <laughs> and tell you ready to talk. I'm sorry. Are oh, you heard me? I'm sorry. Yeah, put your fucking phone on mute. I know we ghetto, cuz, but have some class. <laughs> My mom just got me in trouble. Man, look. I am serving Maggie the cat in my little slip. Yeah, put your phone on mute. That's right. All right, now, like I'm saying. Do you think that Chauvin... First of all, the boy, that old man, is a racist, okay? This man was dealing and therefore, with... Therefore, therefore, if he's a, if he's a racist, period, point blank, I bet you his family history was a part of racism. And it shows. You understand me? All that I didn't mean to, it doesn't work. I don't even yeah. mean to say I didn't. I, I guarantee you he has a history of violence. Right, he does. And I gangster guarantee you this right here on Neighborhood. Uh, yes. I do feel that deep inside he had a contest against this man, a problem with the fact that, yes, he has him a beautiful white lady. I think so too. You know, which is all just bent up in the thing like, okay, I got you now. I've always, I, I never liked you, nigga. And I never liked that you had a white, a pretty white girl. That was the, all of those things is built up. I never so liked now, nigga. Now I that you're on you my team, was no, that time to deal with reality, man? And this is why we're going through this shit. We're coming up with all these. They're coming up with all these excuses, and we actually think about these garbage. They be well, you know, he got personal problems. I don't give a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck about our personal problems when right. we rob a bank and a police get shot or an innocent person gets shot. Nobody looks at us like, well, something must be wrong with this man. Something must be on his mind for him to do something so stupid. Something must be wrong. No, he's a criminal. Why? He has a criminal background. But what about what he's going through? What about his mind? What about what, where his head is at at the time? No one cares. Who robs a bank in the middle of the day? Guess what? They make more fuss out of a regular black man robbing the bank in the middle of the day than they did with the Hollywood bank robbers. Fully Talk about it. Up best Explain stuff. that to us, Corrupt, because Forrester was like, mm hmm Explain that to us. What, the what Hollywood bank robbery people, they was fully bested up with Kevlar to where they can't even get shot and rob the bank during right. daylight in the middle of the day. Nobody talked about any of this garbage. Uh, you know, it came and it went. Rodney King had more press than all the rest of that than these white people or whoever they was robbing the bank during the middle of the day with all this ammo and stuff. People been had access to guns. Now they want to make gun laws about it. They want to blame it on bad presidency. They want to blame it on this and blame it on that. I'm not mad at the bad presidency because I agree with that. Okay. Well, we'll but, go back there. We'll go back there. Um, okay, so then let's carry on. Um, Derek, do you have an opinion on do you think the color of his woman had anything to do with Chauvin's distaste? No, nah, not really. You know, I feel like okay, she, you know, she had she had his back, you know what I mean? So not really. Okay, well, what about Wait, I got a thing. I got a thing. Derek. Yes. As much as you want to avoid what's really going on in society, and you want to avoid these things that require, you're a black man. Yes. These things should be of concern to you. The reason why it's not a concern, I'm very interested in, that when you hear about these issues, how it does not take your attention where it's like, okay, let me, I, I got to understand. I got to see what's going on. Cause this shit can happen to you cuz. If you ain't learned being nice and being cool will not stop the police from fucking with you. Evidently you ain't had too many police incidents. So therefore I can relate to that part of it. Hey, you know, but when the police fuck with you like that you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So as a black man, first, yes, you should have some concern, buddy. 
You should be able to answer these questions Paul is talking about, Derek, because it's real to your community of your yeah, for sure. community. You see what I'm saying? And this is the point that I'm making, Paula. Derek is a key example. No one gives a fuck. And that's why we have him because here. It ain't, because it ain't happening. Our demographic. Yeah. See what I'm saying, Derek? Because it ain't happened to you like that. You can't relate. Have you ever so, had a gun right. pulled on you, Derek? Have you ever had cops just circle you and just pull all their guns on you like you're has anything like that ever happened to you as a black man there we froze is everybody froze am i the only one not froze i'm gonna say i am because i'm still moving and those two are too froze yeah. and i don't know where cookie is it just says cookie hole You know what I'm saying? And just seeing others going through this type of shit wakens your eyes to like, okay, yeah, I ain't never had this happen to me. But I keep hearing these stories since I was young of these same situations. I need to know, I need to see. And, and that's the point. You don't do it because it happened to you. You do it because you're concerned. See what I'm saying? We can't continue to live our lives like just because we ain't in Africa and we ain't experiencing Rwanda. Right, but aren't we in our own way? But we can't keep continuing to live life that way. And right. that's the key to it. Because I'll be honest, Derek, I had the things happen to me and I'm like, hey, man, I just don't care. And I'm just going to keep on riding it out. Right. And it, when it happens to me, I'm going to ride it out and I'm just going to live to fight another day. And, and that don't work. That's called the turn the other cheek shit, man. And on the reels, that shit played out when uh, four or five <laughs> passed away Martin Luther King, because that shit is, you know, nowadays, you know. By any means necessary. Hey, all of us, all of us as one. For sure. Point across that there's equal rights. And a person could say to you, well, have they done anything wrong to you? No, they haven't. But they have to this man, they have to right. this man, they have to this woman, they have to this woman, they have to this child, and they have to this child. Right. And these are basically my people. Right, Empa empathy. You know right. So you have to take an interest yourself. And people who it has never happened to have to take an interest for themselves because it's happening to the majority not the minority, but the majority of people that look just like you, people who are from your circle. And so, one day it could happen to you. And guess what? If you have this mentality, you'll get through it and keep on pushing. And hey, since I don't know him, fuck him. Nah, it ain't like that. You know? Well, you can't, I mean, I'm just saying, you yeah. might as well. I mean, let's deal with the bottom line, okay? If 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 because I've I'll be honest, you know, I don't pay too much attention to the news because I don't like what the news likes to uh glorify. Right. Glorifying means that they concentrate on it and put it on right. the news when there's so many different things that's going on that they would like to concentrate on certain things that you know, if you can concentrate on that, you can concentrate on this too. Right. There's so mm -hmm. many things that are swept under the rug that the news don't give you. So, you know, you got to make your own decision as a man or a woman to basically utilize your instinct. Computers is running the world right now. Serious. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, right. As they listen to you. you know right. Saying? So it's like, you know, social media. You know what I'm saying? A person can say something on social media and people will believe it. Right. Like, how Go long back. did we think right. that DMX was alive and not alive and alive and... It, it got confusing. Yeah. So let me continue this question. I definitely, on... I definitely understand. And I definitely understand. And I do have a concern, you know. I concern about everybody, you know what I mean? Especially our people and stuff. It's just, you know, like like how you said, I never I never lived it. You know what I mean? So I understand it because I see what's going on. 
You know what I mean? And, and I'm not telling you to be a Black Panther about it. You know what? I'm going. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that either. Put my fist up. The I'm a. Crips are no, the, the Black Panthers. Is you know what I'm saying? Because especially being in a position that you are of power, because you know your brother is Rodney Jurgens. You you have a your whole family's connected to this game. There's a lot of people that listen to you, whether you know it or not. So to not have an opinion, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Have an opinion comes with the territory. To be on this level that you are, a celebrity status, any of this, it is very important to be in tune with what's going on in the world that you live in. You are a black uh -huh. man. That means you live in a black community. Black folks is who buy your records. These uh, the shit white people buy your records. All races are into good music. They buy your right. records. So unified. you have a concern with what's going on in the world. We can't just go through our days because we celebrities to just make it to the next day. Hey, I did this. I did this. That. You know, I'm not really into the news, but guess what? My wife is. So when she right. watches the news, I watch the news. Right. Right. Which I'll be. Honest. That little bit influence. Sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and turn on the local news. Then I'll go to CNN for worldly. And you're news, so intelligent. HM, That's HM, why HM, we do this show. You know what I'm because saying? Yes, you have something to give. And if you're not watching, then you can't give. Like last week, it was so beautiful to me that you didn't, you chose not to see it. But when we started talking about it, you went off, watched, you were gone nine minutes <laughs> approximately, and you came back corrupt. And you felt what we'd all been feeling for the past year. You know, you, you educate yourself. You're constantly educating yourself. And your opinion and it happens, matters. It happens split second. It happens split second. It's all about yourself. And it's like talking about this subject and not understanding what's going on just knowing from the social media just knowing from the little tidbits that i see and then we're getting into this in-depth conversation yeah i'm gonna take some time out let me see exactly what happened but let you didn't some... there you had already seen it right educated yep I mean, yeah i see it you see what I see it. and mm -hmm. when you do see it it's like wait a minute okay and now you your emotions your heart your soul and your mind now you can feel the anger. You can feel whether you should be angry or not. And, and being angry is not bad. It's a healthy thing. You still have to control your anger. But it's, it's just human to be happy. It's human to be angry. It's human to be sad. And we're all just humans. And that's the whole point. Being a human don't give you an excuse to break the law when you know that's not now let me slip this in. I, they talked sure. about it when it first happened, but they're not bringing it up thus far in the trial. That the counterfeit bill that George Floyd passed was a part of a ring that not only George Floyd, but also Chauvin was a part of. It all and it also, this and it also of the shows, first of all, first of all, if he did have the counter, I mean, okay, he had the counterfeit bill, right? What does that have to- But George, but the, the guy who killed bill. him- He had the counterfeit bill, right? Okay. But the guy who killed him gave it to him. Him being, him being dead is not gonna help you to is get that, to where the source is. Yeah. Now but like Paul- What's the whole said, point of this it? This guy, and if I'm not mistaken, Paul, you're saying the guy that was a part of him dying also was a part of this ring. Yes. Yes. So mathematically, if you add it up, when you gain this information, what does it literally tell you? He was trying to what shut him people, up. What do people do? What do people do when somebody knows something about them or can connect them to something that will get them in trouble? A they, setup? Eliminate the problem. Yeah. It's the law of the land of criminal activities. And that's this the problem the with them not bringing here. that up. So we get rid of them. And that's why they don't want to make a big fuss about like Paul. And it's that's like, why it, it makes sense why when he wasn't sure if the shimmy worked, he was adamant about getting into the ambulance with George. 
to make sure that dead men don't talk. Yeah, I've seen that. So uh, why are they not mentioning this in the trials? Why is it just, you know, they haven't mentioned that they knew each other? They haven't mentioned that they worked together? They haven't mentioned that they trained as security guards together because just because you're a cop does not mean that you automatically get a security badge or a security whatever. You have to train for that right along with the other people who train for that. They trained together, they worked together, they were in the counterfeit ring together. They were both passing these bills. So it makes sense why his neck was shimmy and why this man wanted to get in the ambulance to continue, which is something that cops never do, to continue what he began. What do you think about that, Derek? Do you think that they're purposely not? I think they're purposely not, you know what I mean? And I don't know why they're not. They should, because, you know, I feel, <laughs> I just feel it's crazy. Like they, they, they should, and I don't know why. I, I don't. I can't tell you why. You know what I mean? But I they know should mention that you are such a sensitive soul that a lot of this you don't focus on, and I understand that because it hurts. No one wants to see. Yeah. And watch this. I know it's hard for me to watch every day. You know, watch. Hi, baby. So I'll ask you too. Like, you know that Chauvin and um, Mr. Floyd knew each other, right? I didn't know that. Yes. They were security guards together. They were oh. given the uh counterfeit money they were both a part of a counterfeit ring all this came out last year but now they're covering it up and they're not mentioning it like they knew it bringing it up. they worked together wow. they both were passing those bills and all of a sudden george gets caught for passing one and you acting like you don't know the man you know his woman because she came okay. to with him. So on that note, Paula, it makes sense because you're talking about the cop. Yes. Okay. So more sense. reason for him. Lance. More reason for him to put Floyd, George right. Floyd, out because then he can't talk. Dead man. What? I went to jail, he would have started talking and it all would have been revealed. So that makes sense. He would have done the 6 9. Yeah. So to protect, whatever. So <laughs> to protect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. So to protect him and anybody else that's in that counterfeit ring. Right. So we, and how about this, right? Let me give you a greater crime. What if it was murder for hire? Mm. Right, don't get me started. I told you I'm a psychologist by nature. I'm a, a lawyer. lawyer by trade, Hello. But my hobby paid me more. <laughs> how about that? Because the police is on the police is on the payroll too, Paula. The police is on the payroll too. This. How you know? You me? Mm -hmm. We know because I know the <laughs> law of the land. Know. Right. Right. Oh, because we know. Okay. Because the reality is, cause man, y'all better pay attention to these movies. A lot of these things are stories that was told from the inside. Hello. Right. Now that makes sense, though, Paula. I didn't know that. And it and also, like one of my. One of my, my initial feelings was he was also jealous of his woman. You know what I mean? That this fentanyl taking man has the nerve to have a beautiful white woman on his arm. 
right. her to work where I work and be a part of this whole big thing we're doing. And now he's spending the money that was, you know, and now he's caught. Right. Why are we not talking about this? Why, why is this not a major part of- And like you said, how do we know that it wasn't a setup for him to go there? Because how is it so coincidental that that cop was the one that was there at that crime? And his partner in crime. Right. So it right. to me brings a different level if you know the person mm -hmm. that you're killing. Like it's right. one thing for a cop to be called on the scene and there's a counterfeit bill, blah, blah, blah. And this is why everyone was like, really? You doing all that over a $20 counterfeit bill? But even the guy you were talking about, you know, the young boy who made the, the initial call. He called his, his boss right. like, well, I, it was just a $20 bill. We usually call right. for these $20 bills. They come and get them, take them away. And it's, they, they killing this man outside over a $20 bill. That does right. not strike anyone else in the world as an obvious setup. Yeah, it does. I think so. And to me, and it's not that if you're wanting to find out where counterfeit, right? And you want to know where counterfeit, okay, where is this coming <laughs> from? Where is the source? Well, now you killed the person that could have told you or you could have got the information from. And why is the counterfeit bill not even mentioned in the trial? Why is that an issue? Why is his crime, which was so petty, not an issue for the results of that crime. Right. All like a setup to me that they're trying to keep the powers that be mm -hmm. safe. Yeah. Was the point of Chauvin shimmy in his neck, then trying to get into the ambulance to make sure that the neck was shimmy. And the fact right. that he's taking this fall for people bigger than him. Right. Which is why he'll only get possibly 10 years. Manslaughter. So what do we do? I don't know, but that's crazy. I never knew he knew the cop. They yeah, know that. Isn't that a difference? Don't you think there's a difference between killing some random guy you think is on fentanyl with a $20 bill versus killing a man you know, you trained with, you worked with, you know his woman, you were all in a- Did they bring that up in court? Hmm? Did they bring that up in court that uh, they knew each other? Uh, no, 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 no. I have yet, Forrest, have you heard them bring it up? They have yet to bring it up. Mm. It's like they, they, they told us- they know about it? Else. They told us all of it last year when the, when it when it initially happened. They forgot they told us. A year later, he's on trial, and these points are not being made. We're focusing on, I think, some Irish guy. Uh, I don't know. He's got a thick, uh, maybe Irish. I, I'm, I, I like to call myself good with recognizing accents. And he's a phenomenal <laughs> doctor. And he is going, you know, verbatim down the list of the fact that, first of all, let's go here. Okay. They tried to say that he had brain damage. So they were trying to say that the fentanyl created a heart attack. But the doctor came on and said that because the cops said, they heard, they heard the cops say, if you can talk, you can breathe. Because, you know, George Floyd's most famous statement was, I can't breathe. So their, their I don't whatever testimony their defense is, if you can right. talk, you can breathe. 
So the doctor came on and said, talking requires an exhale. Excuse me. Breathing requires an inhale. So just because someone can talk in the moment doesn't mean Mm -hmm. it's later. They won't be able to. So the doctor came on and said, asthma attack. People have asthma attacks. Yes. And they still, and my inhaler. Right. Right. Because forced air coming out is not air coming in. So, okay, first let's go back. Were you aware there were two more guys laying on him behind the car that we couldn't see from the video? No. All we saw was the knee shimmying. Right. Two more officers, one on his back and one on his lower back, putting all their weight on him. So the doctor was able to explain also that after five minutes of the nine minutes, his brain was dead. Now, they had some inaudible footage of him saying something that they said was him saying, what they say he was saying? I took some drugs. To me, it sounded like I didn't right. he took some drugs. You couldn't make out what he was saying. I it was inaudible because at that time right. there was no oxygen going to his brain. The doctor was able to sit there and tell you every movement and what that meant to his body, you know. And the positions that they had him in, that that pig thing, that where your legs are up. And then right. they made some inaudible voice, blah, 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 blah. And that was supposed to be him saying, I'm on drugs. So that being said, Lisa, the, is that, is someone saying to you, I'm on drugs and you're an officer? Doesn't, do, what do you think should be done? Because let's keep in mind, they have uh, pepper spray. They have taser. They, have they also have a right. bill club. Right. Someone says, I'm on drugs. I didn't Not only that, you have three people on one. So he's. And he's saying I'm on drugs. I didn't understand that to say that, but that's what they say. They're experts. But then how responds, this is what happens when you do drugs. Wow. So the other two men that were on him, why are Mm -hmm. they not, why are they just putting it all on Chauvin? Right. Can anyone, can you help, can you? No, because it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Logically, it doesn't make any sense of anything that they did. Wait a minute. Forrest is telling me that L.A. Cop was a witness. Oh, yes. Then they used L.A. Cop as a witness, as an expert for the use of force. And I'm like, they're in Minneapolis. Why are you bringing a Los Angeles police officer as your use of force expert right is it because of rodney king i mean it was so easy for the prosecutors to bring this man down because do you know the minneapolis force wait minneapolis minneapolis got rid of that use of force right last year yes that's why they brought la in to say well make because in LA, do they do that? If it's, is it banned? And, right. So is it, so we can bring the LA one in to come in and talk about how it's good, but that's irrelevant if it's in Minneapolis, like you said, it's, they banned that in Minneapolis. So they're shutting him down. The prosecutors are the defense, right? He's got the defense. So on every turn, they're shutting the LA cop down because they're like, are you familiar with Minneapolis? Right. No. A little bit. I guess I read it. 
how are you an expert from LA? Right. What? It's a whole different state, whole, whole different jurisdiction, different laws. It's not federal. What did you, our person, um, who, who, who Cora just mentioned, what, what, Rodney King, we didn't kill him. No. Oh, is, is that your, your point of being an expert witness to, to say we do the same thing, but we don't kill? That he didn't die. Why not get a Minneapolis expert to explain that? I think you're right. I think what you said right now, I think you just hit it on point. Because if they're trying to do that because of Rodney King and the excessive force that was used on him, he didn't die. Right. So they're trying to use that and say this excessive force is not what caused the death because LA did it with Rodney. He didn't die. So this with George. They didn't shimmy on the right, right. I think you had it exactly what you said, Paula. 100%. That was what they were attempting to do. But I don't think right. it worked because he cannot be an expert witness from LA for something that happened right. in Minneapolis. Right. So how did they even allow him to get up there and give his, his statement, his testimony? Okay, so Dr. Martin Tobin, he did this pro bono. He didn't even get paid to be a witness, which I thank him. You know, the doctor um, who was the expert witness on brain damage and everything he totally broke it down you know he testified that anyone under the same circumstances that george floyd would have was in would have died it had nothing to do with fentanyl it had nothing to do with the fact that he had a tumor i think it says he had he had some type of you know health issues but right. was more about the the way they were laying on his spine his neck mm -hmm. and his legs they had all their weight on his spine they even showed how it was constricted and it would have been constricted with anyone under those circumstances they said he had a paraganglium headaches he had consistent headaches he was right. trying to convey that to them and they didn't listen so where are we going with this trial lisa i mean if he gets 10 years the guys think that we're going to all jump up and rebel is that what the message that we want to send? Is that is that really what we want to do, people? Do we really want to riot? How many years do you think he should get? I think he should get life. I do too. I do too. For the death penalty. Yeah. yeah. No. Life. So He's getting manslaughter, right? So manslaughter in Minnesota carries a max of what? Minimum, maximum, do you know? Mm -mm. I just know the maximum for him as, an, as a police officer was 10 years. Ten. And with good behavior and going to one of those country club type of jails. He'll be right. five. Two years. Two. Yeah. This is yeah. your life. To yeah, I think so. Right? His drug dealers get more time than he get. We we dealers get more time than that. Right. Pickpockets, thieves. Get more time. Yeah. I don't know, guys. It just with the all the death going on in the universe right now, I feel like we have to do something when we can. And I just hope no matter what happens at the end of this trial, we keep in mind that brave brother who rammed into the cop mm -hmm. with an eye for an eye. 
So can I ask you a question, Miss Paula. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, um, what happened to the police that the shot ran in the lady house and um the ambulance lady and shot her up? Oh, I, her. oh yes, nothing. Let me get no time. What's her name? What was her name, baby? Brianna. Brianna. Oh, Brianna. Yeah. Yeah, nothing happened. Nothing. Nope, nothing. So happened. yeah, I guess it, it is about time that you know. We have to set people set have to set an example. So you know? if they if the government doesn't set a message, I'm okay with the brother who ran into the cop. I'm sorry, y'all, but I hope that that is enough. That brother gave his life so that we don't go crazy when Sean right. does not get what he deserves. And I'm praying right. that everyone listening to us, everyone within ears reach, everyone with the heart accepts that as that young brother's sacrifice to us for us so that we don't make it more than what we know it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our two hours are up. I don't even understand how it happened so fast. It's already midnight for me. That means it's 10 for you. Right. So get yep. it's already 10 o'clock. So we can say goodnight. I don't know why cooking name on there. Put your name in there for <laughs> I ain't seen no cooking. She ain't, for her. she ain't even showed it. Cooking all night, right? Cookie, don't be showing your name. That ain't funny. You funny. Cook it hard. That ain't funny. When you was working, I was there. Yeah. yeah. Now you just sitting there. <laughs> How you gonna jump on me? I know. I got my mic being on me. I'm about to jump back on him. You know how mama do it. It is time to go. I'm about to do it. I love you, D. Who's it for, Derek? All right. <laughs> hey, corrupt. Corrupt. How I you gonna jump on me about my microphone? And your, your mic wasn't muted. All that noise I just heard. That was me because I had to go. I had to go and find him out there. It, 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 hold on, it was my mother that got me in trouble, but he still, he still argued that. Me. I'm cooking. It's me and my wife's uh, anniversary weekend. Happy year! I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> as soon as Happy I get anniversary, I'm going to dinner. Happy there tomorrow. Yes, because you know, you know, your boy um, Bentley already said he prefer to handle the business at Boa. So right. wasn't comfortable yeah. talking about the whoop 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 the whoop whoop and the wham and the wham. <laughs> right. So we're gonna go to Boa as soon as I get back, and we're gonna make it happen. And we're also gonna Let's celebrate this year. And Daz also gave up his shout out and said, "Tell Paula, I'm so sorry." You know. Uh, Always next that. Friday. And that's why I told him. I said, "So when are you going?" He said, "I'm gonna let you know because." Yeah. You know, you here. If you know. Not here, we'll be here for for who corrupt? It's for them. We That's why it's the forum. Church. I love y'all.